Test. Good morning and peace be with you. Welcome to St. Francis Xavier Parish as we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our presider is our pastor, Father Jim Kamey. And good morning and happy Easter to everyone. And our gathering song is number 540. Jesus Christ has risen today. Please rise. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christe Eleithi. Yes! How about if I go, Jinjin Chavo, Konvo, Tainton? Okay, anyway. So, for those of you who are visiting, my parishioners know this is uh, when I was working in Vietnam. This is uh, Vietnamese vestment, and yellow is the color only the emperors wore. So, these would be things we would wear on All Saints Day, or Christ the King, Christmas and Easter, because Jesus is King and Lord of all. So, as we gather today, uh, we give God thanks and we give God glory because there's no penitential, right? Because we're doing it with the sprinkling, right? That's what I thought. So, so let us now just give God glory. <laughs> Let us pray. God of undying life, by your mighty hand you raised up Jesus from the grave and appointed him judge of the living and the dead. Bestow upon those baptized into his death the power flowing from his resurrection that we may proclaim near and far the pardon and peace you give us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives and reigns with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. But let's, I forgot to say hello to everybody who's watching us on YouTube, not able to make it today. So everybody say hi. Hello. Hi. hi. There you go. 
Now, if you're in the back and you're coming in and you don't find a seat, there are plenty up front with all the bad Catholics, okay? So just come on up front. There's plenty right up here. Don't worry. Okay. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, Galilee after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power? He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is, This is the Day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I invite you to put your books away and try to listen to the Gospel. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw that the stone re was removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told him, they have taken the Lord from the tomb. We do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples were out, went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciples also went in, who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned home. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over the tomb and saw two angels in white clothing sitting there one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, 
and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, stop holding on to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Sandra Schneiders is a wonderful scripture scholar, she was, and her expertise was in the Gospel of John. And so I, I was fortunate enough to have her for uh, scripture in theology and took her for the Gospel of John. And we talked about this passage in class, and one of the lines she said always stuck in my head. Mary went looking for a corpse but encountered the risen Jesus. She was looking for something that was dead but encountered something that was alive in a way even she did not expect. So then the question becomes, for Easter, what are you looking for? Don't worry, you don't have to answer today. You can look at me today. I won't ask questions today, okay? Thank you. Okay, the mic, they, they know, they know. But you don't know, do you? No. <laughs> I'm teasing you. So, what are we looking for? Are, are, are we looking for a false savior? Are we looking for something other than the risen Jesus? What is Jesus telling us to say as he sends us forth in this Easter season as we live our lives in the world? Go and tell my brothers and my sisters what? As we know, it, it's often not the words that means so much to people, it's how we live our lives, right? It's how we live our daily lives. Yesterday in the Easter Vigil, we do the Exodus reading, which is the horse and chariot were cast into the sea. And in that reading, and we do it as a song, there's kind of these extra verses, but it's kind of the whole meaning that God not only cast Pharaoh's horse and chariot into the sea, he cast slavery and death into the sea. He cast hate and prejudice into the sea. He dispelled darkness and cast that into the sea. If that's where we're living, with darkness, with hatred, with prejudice, this is not what Jesus has meant for us to go and tell. If we live like that, can we honestly say we have seen the Lord? If I can't see the Lord in the person who is the other, then I guess I'm not looking correctly. If I can't see the Lord in the person with whom I disagree, even though they're very wrong. I <laughs> it's me still, don't worry. <laughs> Something's wrong with that picture. 
I, I think today Jesus might ask us, as we go out and look at the world, Jim, why are you weeping? Oh, well, there's a lot of reasons, I think. But one of the things that has really struck me in this whole Holy Week, in this Triduum, is again that no matter how dark it seems, or lost it seems, love conquers death. Easter is about that's what we celebrate. That God's love is stronger than death, stronger than the darkness, stronger and greater than our own sins. God's love is what saves us. Horse and chariot were cast into the sea. Death and darkness were cast into the sea. Fear was cast into the sea. Sometimes we sing this psalm, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid, right? Sometimes I think that psalm is like a question in our lives. Of whom should I be afraid? Because I'm afraid maybe of a number of things. But really, it's a psalm of rejoicing, of exclamation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. And that's how we are supposed to live in the world. There's a wonderful movie out on Netflix right now called Shirley, about Shirley Chisholm, first African-American woman in Congress. And she actually goes and visits George Wallace in the hospital and prays with him and prays for him. That says something about her faith and about who Jesus is and ultimately about how we are treat others, including our enemies. What are you looking for? Why are you weeping? Don't. Be like Mary running to the world and saying, I have seen the Lord and let people know it by your actions. Instead of um, saying our creed, today we do a renewal of our baptismal promises. I ask you to stand. Dear friends, through the mis Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we renounce Satan and all his works of evil and promise to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. So after the, everyone is, I, I do is the answer. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you renounce Satan, author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, was buried, and who rose again and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. This is our faith and we are proud to profess it. And since we renew our baptismal promises, we will have a, that's just when we do our sprinkling right then. And so we bring then our prayers before our loving God. For all Christians all over the world on this Easter day, that we might proclaim with our lives the good news of God's love and forgiveness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all spiritual seekers that they find within our church a place of warm welcome and place to serve, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, for those who enjoy Easter baskets and bunnies today, and for those who are hungry or hurting in any way, that they be given everything they need to grow up to be loving and caring people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world and our nation, for those people, places, and situations that seem hopeless, that the Easter miracle of new life give us hope to keep trying and keep working, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who love and care for them, that they too experience Easter joy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who mourn the death of loved ones, that we be confident in the promise of the resurrection, we pray. For those who have asked for our prayers and for those prayers we hold deep in our hearts, we pray. Hear these prayers, loving God. Grant them as you grant all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our song at the presentation of gifts is number 537, 537, Easter Alleluia. Alleluia. Let all the people God's praises now sing. 
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice, our lives, may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice. Filled with Easter joy, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished with the food of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation that we should acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers and the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Lord God, on this most sacred day, we celebrate the glorious resurrection of your Son and exulting in his might, mighty victory over death. We humbly pray by the power of your Spirit, sanctify these gifts we have brought before you, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, and he was handed over to death. He took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Calling to mind, Lord God, the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of his return, we offer you in thanksgiving 
this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you that we may share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the apostles and martyrs, Saint Francis Xavier, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Francis, our Bishop James, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you, and unite to yourself all your children now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give the world everything that is good. <coughs> through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. And so in this Easter joy, we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you. 
Behold, God's love poured out that we might live. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. For communion, we will have six stations, one on each of the far aisles, and we will have four here in the center, two right in front of the sanctuary, and two, you'll see them on the middle of the pews, uh, facing inward, so that when you come down two by two at the center aisle, each side will have a choice of two communion ministers to go to. Um, if you need a low gluten host, please come to me. I'm the guy in the yellow. Okay. <laughs> in case you missed me. Okay. And our communion song is number 945. 945, I am the bread of life. <laughs> Oh. 
Our second communion song is number 941, 941, Eat This Bread. Please be seated.
Please remain seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, watch over your church with unfailing care that we who have received new life through the Paschal mystery of Christ may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, normally, um, when we always ask our visitors, you know, to stand, and I run around <laughs> and I go and ask visitors to stand, but my guess is there's a lot of visitors today. So I would ask our visitors to stand so that we can give you a welcome and a round of applause. Everybody, oh, anybody who's visiting, please stand. Don't worry, I'm not coming around. <laughs> Yay. Welcome to our visit. We hope you're enjoying a wonderful time with family and friends. Um, let's see. For announcements, over here by the Easter candle, by the baptismal font, we have bottles of holy water for you to take home with you. They're free today. Next week, they're $1.99. No. So <laughs> we have a bunch. So please do take them with you. It's kind of a tradition so you can take these holy water bottles home with you. Um, I want to say as, as always, I mean, we've, we, th thank you to Laura Worms, our music director, yay, and all of our musicians. As, as I said on Palm Sunday, the only person more tired on Easter Sunday than the pastor is the music director. So Laura, you, you're, you're great. Thank you. Okay. I uh, also want to, on behalf of all the staff at St. Francis Xavier, Anne and Sue and Marianne and Peggy and Becca, we want to wish you and your family a wonderful, wonderful and happy Easter and a blessed week. And I think that's all the announcements there are. And I do want to thank, though, our people who do the environment committee. I know they would not like it if I mentioned their names. Would that be correct, Jackie and Diane? <laughs> <laughs> so I won't do that. So thank you all very much, and Becca and Mary Ann and, and Maggie and, and the Stiggers who helped do the banners and everything. It's a lot of people put this together, help make it a wonderful, prayerful celebration. Uh, if you're not going to take your bulletins home with you, please just place them in the back on the tables where you got them. And if you could just straighten out your pew before you go and things like that, it just helps us clean, straighten out the books. If there's anything else, just kind of get rid of them. Okay. So the Lord be with you and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. On this solemn feast of Easter, having followed the Lord Jesus and his suffering, we celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May God Almighty, the Almighty, bless you and mercifully protect you from the perils of sin. Amen. Amen. May God, who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus, complete in you the gift of immortality. Amen. Amen. Through the grace of Christ, may God lead you to the banquet of lasting joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks. And our song of sending is number 540, 540, Christ Jesus Christ has risen today. Nope, sing with all the saints. 539. 539, it was one off. <laughs> sing with all the saints in glory. <laughs> 